each of you will be responsible for making the best progressive four-course meal of your life. That's it. No twists. You'll be serving the judges and a table of acclaimed chefs from all over the world, including Marcus Samuelson, Dario Cecchini, Carne. <laughs> Claire Smith, she's been named best female chef in the world, Mauro Colagreco, who currently has the number one spot on the San Pellegrino 50 World's Best Restaurant list, just to name a few. <laughs> This table of guests are really impressive, and we want you to impress them, so we brought in some reinforcements. We can see them through the fog. <laughs> I see the fog peeling away, and like these three figures like coming at us. Hello! Hi! Hi. <laughs> All three are amazing chefs. All three of them also have big personalities. I think we're gonna leave you all alone. <laughs> Each one of you will get one of these sous chefs. This kind of reminds me of when I was a young cook at an Italian restaurant, Delfina in San Francisco. For the pre I want to make a squash agnolotti with Szechuan chili oil. My job was to make cipollini onions all day long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a big bulk of my career was training in Michelin star French kitchens. And then I did butchery and pasta making for a few years. And I want to tie that all back to my heritage. This dish really tells my story, the soul of me. So if you could break down the boar yep. and the guinea hen, this is stuff absolutely has to happen today. Brian Voltaggio, I know him well enough to know that right now he's on pins and needles. What time do we have? This lasagna just has a lot of components. The pasta dough, the bolognese, the bechamel, the porcini duck cell. This will be the fastest lasagna I've ever assembled. If we don't finish, this train is going to come off the tracks. There's going to be a lot of layers in this dish. Literal and figurative layers. Yeah, this is so fresh, like the feathers are still on here. <laughs> Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make the pasta dough. The second course, Telegio stuffed capoletti, comes from working for Chef Barbara Lynch. It was just one of those dishes that I was like, I totally get it. It was like the first pasta dish I ever made that wasn't red sauce. It made me super excited about what pasta could do. I mean, people just die for it. This will be the malted chocolate center of the sphere. That was your hazelnut ice cream. I don't want to alarm you, but uh, this is gonna be delicious. <laughs> Hey, chefs. Hi, chef. Hey, Brian. Hey, chef. How's How are going? you? Good. What do you got going? When you asked us to put together a menu that was going to tell some of the stories about who we are as a chef, I think that I've given you guys stuff that looks like I'm just a modernist cooking chef, and I'm more than that. Got you it. Know? So what I'm doing, I'm making uh, cachuco. The only time I ever set foot in Italy was to learn how to make that dish. It's a dish I make every Christmas Eve. Is it? Yep. You all have strong opinions about this yeah. one, chef. I know you will. Sounds good. Hey, Steph. Hi. How's it going? I'm in a good place. Again. Are you? Oh, good. Yeah, good, 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 I am. Good. You know, in planning a menu, it was like, what matters to me? I worked with Mark Vetri, and it was like one of the most meaningful yeah. nights. He did a veal braised with milk and lemon. Mm -hmm, sure. And so... I know the dish. I've done it with pork, not um, veal. Yeah. Tom knows the veal dish very well and has made it himself. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it is a lot of pressure. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. Hey, Melissa. Hi, Chef. How's it going? Good. You know, I think a lot of my cooking style is taking inspiration from the region. And sure. I found these persimmons, which yeah. um, are similar to the you food you, the trees, and they're yeah. growing everywhere. So yeah. I really wanted to add a fruit element, but I wasn't sure what is it kind. Sweeter? It's a sweet one, yeah. Okay. They're called caco mille. But the whole idea of this menu is to really bring both cultures together, of Chinese and Italian. I'm trying to think if anybody's doing Chinese Italian food. I don't know Right, if yeah. Tom, he makes me second guess things. But the term fusion just has a bad rap. I really want to change that. This is it. This is for all the marbles, OK? <laughs> Thanks, Chef. 20 minutes, guys. Awesome. Thank you so much. Did we make an extra tiramisu? I just wanted to taste one. The cookies are still a little crunchy. They just don't feel soaked enough. I like to get more tea into the cookie. If we have to make another round, we'll do it. OK. If it's not set by tomorrow, we got to rebuild it quick so that it has enough time before the judges eat the dessert. Good tiramisu takes at least four hours to set up. Let's hope they soak perfectly overnight. <laughs> if it doesn't, there is no plan B. Woo! Good luck. Hey, babe. Hi, hi. Who wants to make some money? <laughs> I couldn't do this without you. Here, taste this with me. 
It's still a little dry. Yeah, I think. Do you want to like to redo it? Okay. We'll take you. You know. Okay. Yeah. Just no, so moisten them more. Here. Yeah. It's not the most ideal situation to have to remake this tiramisu, but Leanne's on it. You get a lot more of that milk tea flavor in this time. This is a very ambitious menu. The schedule's really tight. Now it's going to be a push to get these dishes out. Does this look good? Yeah, that looks really nice. OK. So I think we should grill the squab today. OK. For the third course, squab. My main concern is making sure that the skin is really crispy. I don't want to cook it too much. I certainly hope mine <laughs> lives up to Tom's expectations. I will knock out all of this seafood. Yes. Like the cleaning of it. Awesome. I'll get it all done. Yep. Thank you so much. Yep. Today, it's all about portioning all the fish and shellfish. I have to portion the lasagna. We have a lot to get done. I work well under pressure. Dress with bechamel up, some more of the ragu, like over the top. I think that looks stellar. Second course, the lasagna. I wanted there to be a shock, a dish that nobody would expect coming from me. God, I was nervous about doing this, but now I'm not. No, you shouldn't be. It's uh, spectacular. Feel good. So this is our prep list today. For first course, we're doing the prawns wrapped in katafi. Yes. Then we're going to move into the telegio capoletti. From there, we're going to go into the milk braised veal with fried Parisian gnocchi, and then round it out with a casual sticky toffee pudding. So the shredded filo dough is? Katafi. It's like Greek angel hair. The beautiful thing about katafi is its crunch. And baking it in the oven, it's not exactly where I want it to be. I might have to do them in a pan to keep them the way I want them. I'm going to try. Pan frying the shrimp makes it very time sensitive. I don't want them to get tough and rubbery. I want them to be crisp and fresh and perfect. Happy finale. Happy finale. Mm -hmm. Look at this view. Look at this. It's amazing, huh? Ooh, oh, pasta, pasta. All right, Malarkey, I'm going to plate in 10 seconds. The dish only has two components to it, so I know that I'll make it in time. The broth is so good. It's so good. We're still a little behind schedule. I'm realizing, like, we got to kick in a hyper here. Three minutes. We got to go. Get them down. I'll follow with blossoms. Chili's on. 30 seconds, guys. The last final seconds are creeping up on me. Go, 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 go. It's not the time to choke. Feel good? Yeah. Woo. OK. Beautiful. Stephanie, tell us what you made for your second course. I made a telegio capoletti with roasted chicken broth, pumpkin, apple, prosciutto, celery, and a little bit of chive. You have a lot of umami flavors in your bread. Thank you. Melissa? I made a squash agnolotti with chicken skin, acrodolce cipollinis, a little bit of Sichuan chili oil, shiso, and squash blossoms. Brian? I made a lasagna with a wild boar bolognese with porcini duxelles and a quick saute of Tuscan kale over top and a ricotta bechamel. I think a lot of people at this table know me for more of a modernist approach to food. And, and I wanted to tell more of a story about who I am and my upbringing. My mom, with her being a working single mother, to, to be able to create meals that were from scratch. This dish is very special to me. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Thank you. you. Wow. almost a cliche now, you know, cook the best meal of your life. But I have to say, I think all three of you did. We saw the story of your life on that plate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the meal. Thank you for all your sweat and effort and heart. It showed. We tasted it all. Now, of course, we have a really big decision and a hard one as well. We'll call you back in a bit. Thank yeah, you so crazy much. Kids. Thank you. <laughs> Chefs, the destination on this voyage is to become top chef. And the stakes are a little higher because it's all stars. Each of you has much more experience under your belt as a chef and as a person. And sometimes the voyage is more important than the destination. The journey that you take when you dig down deep inside of you and you find out what you're made of, when you sit there in those nights after cooking and you're thinking about it, you go deeper and deeper and deeper. And what comes out is who you are. And I really believe that each of you made that journey this season, but only one of you can be Top Chef. Bye. Melissa, you are 
our top chef. <laughs> God, such a wild adventure. I cannot be more proud of myself. <laughs> to see my mother here <laughs> and to be in this moment with her, it's coming full circle.